ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is uh, with great satisfaction and honor that I begin by thanking the organization of this event, the Academy for Cultural Diplomacy and the Partners for the invitation and for the opportunity they gave me to say a few words at the opening of this economic forum on sustainable business and the responsi <coughs> responsible investments, as well as for the opportunity to be able to present to you my country, Angola. Allow me to do my presentation in Portuguese. Angola precisa de verdadeiros parceiros para o desenvolvimento e sustentabilidade económica. Estou segura que a relação de cooperação entre Angola e Alemanha representa bem este modelo de relacionamento estável e com foco no desenvolvimento e sustentabilidade. Angola needs true partners uh, for the economic development and sustainability. I am sure that the relations, uh, cooperation between Angola and Germany represents well this model of stable relations with a focus on the development and sustainability. Studenten Austausch, zum Beispiel mit Deutschland, hatten wir damals sehr aktive Austausch. Zum Beispiel deutscher akademischer Austausch war sehr aktiv. Alle diese politische Fonds, alle hätten ihre Vertretungen in unserer Region bis jetzt haben, aber die sind, ich merke, ich vermisse aktive Zusammenarbeit in diesem Bereich, im Kulturbereich, obwohl natürlich die begrenzte Möglichkeit, die wir haben, wir machen das, Botschaften zum Beispiel, wir organisieren irgendwelche Veranstaltungen, aber das reicht nicht, alles ist schwieriger geworden. Aber wir Kontakte zwischen Menschen, zwischen Institutionen, zwischen jungen Generationen, das ist wichtig. Wir müssen jetzt wir sind aktiver geworden. Wir warten nicht, dass kommt von irgendwelches Land irgendwelche finanzielle Hilfe und so weiter. Wir Tajik, Wirtschaft in Tadschikistan entwickelt sich. Wir haben mehr Stabilität, stabile. Wir haben auch ein bisschen mehr finanzielle Möglichkeiten. Wir versuchen überall dabei sein und unser Land präsentieren. Und natürlich, es muss noch viel, viel noch gemacht werden. Das und wichtigste politische Ereignisse in den letzten Jahren, unser Präsident, die Präsidenten zentralasiatischer Länder waren im September voriges Jahr, November voriges Jahr in Berlin. And uh, the most important political event in our, in our relations with Germany was the visit of His Excellency President of the Republic of Tajikistan uh, to Germany in, within the framework of the uh, meeting Germany-Central Asia in September 2023. Wir erwarten, dass dieses Jahr auch dieses Format 5 plus 1 Zentralasien Deutschland dieses Jahr in Zentralasien stattfindet. It is expected that uh, this year this uh, meetings in this format uh, Central Asia and Germany will take place in Central Asia. Ja, natürlich wir brauchen für diese Investoren, mehr Investoren aus europäischen Ländern auch. Wir brauchen Maschinen, Technologien aus Europa, aus Deutschland. And to benefit these resources, uh, we need investments, we need technologies, and we, we need equipment, um, European equ equipment to access those and to take benefits from them. Deswegen Tourismus ist wichtig in Tajikistan. That is why tourism is very important in Tajikistan. In der Perspektive Tourismus kann eine wichtige Rolle für wirtschaftliche Entwicklung Tajikistans spielen. And it can play a crucial role in the, the economic development of Tajikistan. Wir sind in Anfangsphase. We are on the, in the beginning phase. Wir, wir sehen, wie Tajikistan in ITB vertreten ist. Um, we can see how Tajikistan is represented in ITB. Das bedeutet, wir haben große Interesse, That means we have a dass big die interest. Touristen aus Europa, aus Deutschland, nach Tadschikistan 
to attract tourists from uh, Germany, from Europe to Tajikistan? Friction is increasing. On the other, we you know, you know we have multipolar world and, and moving toward that direction, which does mean that we need to have better bridge of understanding each other, more efficient bridge. So I hope that cultural diplomacy provides a more efficient channel between societies and communities. So to that effect, the rich culture of Iraq does need to open up more to win the hearts and minds of others and not just fear Ray sort of lay the fears of others in relation to security. It's also a vast country with many resources, human resources and uh, natural resources. So to that effect, we do need to reach out. We now have, Iraq is a mainly oil producing country. And now there is a move to sustainable, green energy, renewable energy. We need to have a better sense of that. Otherwise, we will be out of date in our economical model, in our futuristic. Also, we need a new... We now have... Iraq is a mainly oil-producing country. And now there is a move to sustainable, green energy, renewable energy. We need to have a better sense of that. Otherwise, we will be out of date in our economical model, in our futuristic. We could be the bridge. We could be... We are democratic. Uh, we need to learn better about democracy ourselves, better governance, and maybe we could learn more from the European, how they have the European integration as a project for us to bridge with other countries of our own nation, our own region. Greetings to each and every one of you gathered here today at the Berlin Economic Forum project. As the Iraqi ambassador to Berlin, I'm deeply honored to have the opportunity to address such a distinguished audience on the topic of immense importance, the intersection of cultural diplomacy and the economical development in our rapidly evolving global landscape. Here, let me emphasize the significance of this platform for global dialogue and collaboration. Let us recognize the diverse audience participants here. We have politicians, diplomats, investors, academia, young gentlemen. It's an opportunity for collaboration and knowledge sharing exchange program. Center to our discussions will be the role of culture diplomacy in shaping economical policies and in fostering international collaboration. By leveraging the power of culture exchange, people to people, institution to institutions, government to governments, community to community, we can promote sustainable tourism, enhance national brands, and encourage social responsibility in investments and in other practices we need to do. Cultural diplomacy can serve as a bridge between nations, facilitate dialogue, provide an understanding and cooperation in pursuit of common economical goals. Let us embrace the diversity of prospective representatives in this room and seek common grounds in our shared aspirations for a more prosperous, peaceful and sustainable future. In closing, I would like to express my gratitude for the organizers, for our partners uh, and the, for, for the participants and the Berlin Economic Forum for their commitment to, in advancing the cause of cultural diplomacy and economical development. Thank you very much once again by inviting me uh, to this uh, uh, magnificent event uh, uh, for, for me to really tell the story about Equatorial Guinea, which uh, I can say very few people know here in Germany, especially in Berlin. And, uh, Maybe because, uh, as I said before, maybe because the, the language barrier, but I can still think because some people try to confuse Equatorial Guinea being part of uh, Latin America. I've met some people when I tell them I'm from Equatorial Guinea, they ask me, huh? hey, which part of Latin America is <laughs> So very few people uh, don't really know is, is, is this territory is located in, in Africa. I think there's... Uh, as I told you, uh, I was in uh, last last week. In, it's a, it was a small group of uh, investors, German investors, inviting African ambassadors. 
uh, with uh, the objective to rethink Africa with German companies. So I was there, it was something informal. We talked to each other like that informally. They introduced themselves, they said they are valuable. They're going to find a new way of uh, interacting with, uh, with African uh, partners and so forth to find the right way to invest in Africa and so forth. So this is good. This is a, another level of doing things. So instead of formalizing really formal you know, meetings or conferences, like uh, the last uh, G20, you know, in November here in Berlin, where they invited uh, some African presidents, and after that nothing has been followed up. It's good even we take the level to smaller groups, you know, to informal interactions. And uh, I'll start by saying uh, that I am uh, most honored and uh, elated to have been uh, invited and given this opportunity to conduct uh, this uh, presentation of my country, Equatorial Guinea, as a land of opportunities in this uh, alluring venue of this year's Berlin Economic uh, Forum here at the Academy of Cultural Diplomacy. So, bilateral trade relations have been uh, developing in time. They peaked in 2008 as a result of oil exports to Germany. At the same time, German trade with the Quartier Union was worth of 36 million euros in the year 2005 and reached 81 million euros in 2014. German exports to Equatorial Guinea reached a value of approximately 19 million euros, and exports from Equatorial Guinea reached around 62 million euros. The main import from Germany to Equatorial Guinea are beverages like beer, Heineken, so. And you would still have all of the development around you, and you would be missing out on the chances that come with that, on the experience that comes with change. And that is the first step to ensure future readiness in life and in business. Being aware of change, adapting to change, and having and living change, and having an agile mindset. As I said, you cannot stop change from happening but by not adapting an agile mindset. And I would like to read a short quote for you. Um, on a recent World Bank report, and it says, the global gender gap for women in the workplace is far wider than pre previously thought. When legal differences involving violence and childcare are taken into account, women enjoy fewer than two thirds of the rights men do. No country provides equal opportunity for women, not even the wealthiest economies. Actually, the day uh, when I did uh, my PhD, I came home and her first question wasn't congrats, her first question was, and when am I going to become a grandmother? <laughs> <laughs> and I was asked by clients when I went uh, to the client side, so what do you do with your kids while you're here? My male colleagues never were asked that, uh, not once. And I was always asked, and up to the point where I was so annoyed by this question that I said, um, well, what do you think? I put them in the cellar and I come to you know, have fun <laughs> with you um, because I just couldn't uh, take the question anymore. But it is a reality that um, as parents, you have, a, you have an extra layer of work of mental load, mm -hmm. and it's still not normal that parents share this e equally, mm -hmm. and uh, so often you're tasked more with it, and of course, things are changing. It's already much better than 10 years ago or 15 years ago when I started with my first boy, but uh, it is a reality, and we should take that into account. Um, talk about these challenges that we are facing they're unknown to many, yes. right? And I'm sure that some of the, the things that our male colleagues are actually going through 
if they're not talking to us, if they're not open, yeah. or if my husband is not going through it, I would know. Yeah. So let's keep the communication going. Absolutely. Yes. I'm not going to ask anyone else how I should do it. I'll just do it my way. And at the end of the day, that's what matters, right? And not what others say and what others tell you what you can or cannot do. Just do your thing and go with the flow and see. And I'm sure there will be help in, in the way that you need it. At least that's how it, how it was for me and I guess for you as well. Dear ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to be here. Dear Mark, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Dear Excellencies, it was very interesting listening to your presentation. And I think that I can add with another dimension, which is more the dimension as a practitioner in the field of, of investments, and also to share with you some of, some of the challenges, recent challenges, which uh, the European Union is also facing in the field, and also to address maybe some, some perspectives that we also are looking forward to develop, especially in Africa. Uh, I must say that, that Europe was, uh, over the past decades, always in a privileged position to have access to resources which are definitely outside of Europe. And this is changing right now re very rapidly. So this is also changing the investment behavior. This is changing many, many things. Uh, there is no shortage of money. There is shortage of resources. And this is something that we always have to keep in mind when we discuss this, because this is something concerning survival. It's concerning strategic interests. So going back to the ESGs, they don't fit into this picture. Uh, a copper smelter, an investment in a copper smelter, just the smelter is one billion. So this is something that actually very few countries in Africa can, can afford to having. Uh, this is also the reason why, why um, Saudi Arabia invested in a complex of a copper smelter. They invested together with Trafiguro 8.6 billion to feed the copper smelter. And, and the feed for the smelter is going to be definitely coming from Africa, also in the next 50 years. So this is, this is the vision also how to replace oil and so on. So the, the value chain also in all these elements is shifting. And um, I mean, positive or not, we can take it whatever you want. But the fact is, it's shifting away from Europe. So uh, Europe, uh, in, in many ways, was having the privilege in the past, was in considering also its colonial past, yeah, it, has, it has the privilege, had the privilege, to have access to many resources uh, in, in uh, Africa and Latin America, for example, which is absolutely drying out. So this is this is something that Europe has to understand. Yeah. Well, what you get now is a very unusual speech. It's more, it's more like a spontaneous presentation about Iraq. I'm more like an observer coming as somebody from West Europe with other travelers and uh, the whole history is an interesting one. I would like to combine it with some uh, pictures. It makes it much more fluent. Imagine this, you have huge canyons, Ravandus canyons. What a beautiful destination. So a lot of, we could do a lot of photo stops. It's coming down to, to Arbil, with, driving on these big roads. We're so surprised that it is in such a big scale to be there. Also, the welcome of all the local tour organizers and tourist associations all the time, wherever we were in Iraq, welcome. And there were spontaneous moments, yeah. How happy are your people that guests come in finally back? Yeah. <laughs> you can feel in these moments. These are the great moments you have. And we're just browsing through like in a dream. Everything took longer than we expected because there's so much things to see going to the shops, watching it, and Baghdad seems to be like a melting pot between Africa and Asia.